And welcome everybody to another edition of the Razorback. Uh, holy cow, Otis! This, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is Razorback football report with Otis Kirk. Kirk. I'm your host, Jason Pattison. It's Friday for me, and I'm thinking pretty much fried at this point. Man, how you doing today? Doing good. So, uh, anybody that wants to comment uh, during the show, make sure to throw that up there, and we'll uh, get you guys' as comments on here. We'll throw them on the screen, too, as well. Uh, first day of pads was yesterday. Otis, uh, you were over at practice. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I was there yesterday. Yeah, it was uh, – yeah, I was really really impressed with the quarterbacks. They threw the ball well, all of them, uh, particularly – Really thought Jacoby Criswell threw it excellent. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the receivers look good. Satina, Tislaw, uh, Armstrong, um, Marlon Crockett, some of the guys, you know, I thought they looked yeah. really good. Um, Crockett's a guy never gets mentioned. He's a walk on, but all he ever does over there is catch touchdown passes. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe <laughs> I don't know if it's who he's going against or. Or what, but maybe because he always looks good, but yet, you know, but uh, I, I liked him in high school at Cersei and Cabot. Um, uh, tight ends, they're going to be a strength, not a weakness. People were concerned about that position. You got to understand Morgan Turner's one of the best tight end coaches, if not the best in the country. Uh, he's probably licking his chops too. Yeah, he's got he's got him. just in time, man. That they hit. <laughs> They hit the road just in time out there, man. That's a mess out there. I mean that that conference is a good example of how not to how not to run a business, how to run one. If you want to run a business, take the tw Pac-12 model. And people can say what they want, but college football, college sports is a business, and they ran that conference into the ground, and uh, that was pitiful. But anyway, um, yeah, I just uh, they look good. I mean. Uh, I wish, you know, you could see the scrimmage and watch them tackle. But uh, I like I like the depth they're building there. I, I think they're I think they've got a chance to be pretty good depth wise on defense. I really do. I, I people scoff when I say that, but I really think they've got a chance to be pretty decent there. Uh, the offensive tackles, I guess, is a concern, but uh, I still think those guys have a lot of talent. I mean. They haven't played, but if they haven't played, yeah, they haven't done anything, but they haven't done anything bad either. They haven't done anything good, but they haven't done anything mm -hmm. bad. They haven't played. And I know they were all talented in high school. I, I love Chamley and Marion Harris. And mm -hmm. You can see Gavin play, manual play in high school in real. I mean, I saw him on highlight, not in person. I mean, not real, but in person. I didn't see that. But And uh, Tyke East was good. Uh, he's more of a guard. Um, but – I mean, Kudis is a player. I mean, these guys are going to be okay. I really believe that. And yeah. I mean, Marion stepped in at the Liberty Bowl, played right guard, and uh, really played well there when Ty Keese went down. So I, I think people are. The good thing about it, they're going to have three nine conference games to get to, get to, uh, some experience under their belt at tackle. And it, mm -hmm. it kind of gets harder. You start out Western Carolina, you go to Kent State. Then you go to, then you got, I mean, you, you don't go there, but I mean, you, you start out Western Carolina, Little Rock, then you've got well, Kent State, and then you've got BYU. So it gradually gets a little tougher in the non conference, but you start out with a chance to get some confidence there and experience. I like that. Um, I, I think they're going to be fine, guy. I really do. I mean, as I said earlier, Jacoby Criswell, backup quarterback, is light years ahead of where Malik was ever. Uh, yep. I, I never was a big fan of Malik. I, I I liked him as a person. I just didn't think he was a very good quarterback. And people got mm -hmm. mad because I said that. But I'm just being honest. I mean, I'm not going to get yeah. on and say I love somebody's ability. I I think he can play, but I don't think he can play in the Arkansas offense at the SEC level. I just don't. That quarterback. Now somewhere mm -hmm. else he probably could have wide receiver or something. But he you know he wanted to be a quarterback, and hopefully he'll get that chance where he's at. Yeah, like I said, I've never heard anything bad about the kid as a person. I'm only talking about I wasn't impressed as a college quarterback. Yeah. He, Jacoby's got a cannon for an arm. He throw Jacoby Criswell, in my opinion, throws and I love you know I'm the biggest KJ Jefferson fan in the state. But I think Jacoby yep. throws the deep ball better than he does. I 
I'm telling you, that kid's got a cannon on him, and uh, Chris Wells going to be a good quarterback for Arkansas. So you wait and see. I mean, hopefully it's not this season, except, you know, I, let's hope KJ doesn't get hurt because, like I said, I think KJ's as good as anybody in the country. But, uh, you know, I, I know Caleb Williams and Drake May, and maybe they're better. But, I mean, I, I know he's as good as anybody in the SEC. He and the kid at LSU are both really good. The kid at Mississippi State's good. But KJ's is good or yeah. better than any of those kids, uh, any of those kids in the SEC. Maybe not the nation. I probably shouldn't say that because you got Caleb Williams, Drake May, and a few others that are, are maybe a, uh, unbelievable there. But we'll see. But I love KJ Jefferson. A couple of comments, too. Uh, John Everett uh, thanking us for everything that we're doing. And Otis, he said, I hope to see that you're in, you're healthy and Got a little nicked up there on the arm a little bit, but that's okay. You're you're well, <laughs> you're you'll survive. Yeah, I got in the middle of a dog fight. <laughs> I lost the dog fight. <laughs> uh, my boys were having a slight disagreement, <laughs> trying to break it up, and I got in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, no, I'm healthy. I just I got to stay away from dog fights, man. These guys, they're like. They're like kids, man. They had a little disagreement last Friday, I believe it was. And, uh, yeah, I got in the middle of it. And they accidentally – it wasn't on purpose. They accidentally bit me. Uh, the Bulldog did. And it ended the fight. He was so scared when he bit me. He was so hurt. He bit me. They, they quit fighting, all of them. They quit fighting and started crying and whining. Their dog – I say crying. They were whining and trying to lick it. And, you know, <laughs> oh, and, uh, uh, just goofy dogs. Man, oh my god, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing a lot better there. And uh, a quick th- uh, take from Fishman uh, it said the D line depth is very interesting, and also, uh, I, I do believe that I really, I really, really do. Uh, we had Deke Adams on the podium today. Uh, any takeaways from what how? He's approaching the season with the depth that he has. I think, you know, he's, he said anybody that can help them win is going to play. Uh, he was asked if he was three deep, and he didn't like – he didn't like get mad and say no, 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 downplay it. I mean, they're deep. I mean, all four of those transfers in the transfer portal have played big-time minutes at other schools, big mm-hmm. good schools. Uh, Zach Williams, Shad Stewart, Landon Jackson. You've got three defensive ends off the top of my head right there that are SEC starting experience. Yeah. Inside, you've got Torian Carter. You've got uh, uh, Eric Gregory. Uh, oh, Kim Ball. Yep. So, I mean, yep. there's six kids I named. Then you add the four transfers. you got 12, uh, 10. Uh, mm-hmm. And guys like Nico Davile, uh, I mean, there's other kids. They're just, they're just deep. I mean, they've got some talent there. It's not, it's not a. Uh, I, I asked Carter today if this was the deepest team he's played on. He said, "Yeah, at Arkansas." And he said, "Yeah." Uh, Landon liked it too. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a very deep team, uh, Jason. I, I just think they're. I don't know if they're three deep, but I, I've said back. In the spring, I thought they were 10 deep. Uh, 10, I thought they had 10 SEC caliber players, I think is what I said. I didn't say 10 deep. 10 yeah. SEC caliber players. I was talking about the six ends in the uh, – I mean, the. I'm sorry, the five ends in the mm-hmm. five or six interior players, you know. And you still got other players, though, that can come on. I, yeah. I, I mean, you got these freshmen, you know, Quincy Rose, Ian Gerard, uh, Caleb James. God, I mean, they've got some talent. I mean, Ian, Ian how many times do you have a 396-pound defensive tackle? You know, I mean, <laughs> it's not a stiff. I mean, can actually move. No. And so, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Deke, as weird as this sounds, this is what's crazy. He's the first defensive line coach to stay under Sam, and, he, and he's the only co- assistant coach on defense that returns in the past. You know, Barry has stayed and this and that, but mm-hmm. uh, they've had the defensive line coach leave every year. Well, Deke stayed, but he's the only one. 
And uh, I, I like the staff that they brought in. Marcus Woodson, I love him. I yeah. like Darren Wilson and Travis mm-hmm. Williams. I just think they're – I think they've upgraded Darren. That's not a knock on anybody who left. I just – I like – I like the more aggressive defense. I like the four-man front. I just like what I think they're going to do. I mean, obviously, they haven't played a game. They're undefeated. Mm-hmm. We haven't yeah. seen them giving up a single yard. They haven't given up a completion. You know, after the first game, they hate this defense. But right now, I really like it. But I, I like an aggressive style of defense. And, and there are going to be some growing pains. It's not going to go out here. They're not going to go out here and dominate. I mean, uh, the first game, even the Western Carolina, they're going to they're mm-hmm. – they're, it's going to be growing. And as I said, I think the schedule, and I was talking about offensive tackles, but I think you can put each position there. Maybe, I mean, I don't know what quarterback and running back they did, but most of those positions, even wide receiver, you got these transfers. I like the way that, I, I mean, I like how you start out Western Carolina, you, then you get to Kent State, then you mm-hmm. get to BYU. So you kind of build up there in the nine conference before you play in the SEC. And I get those first four games in the SEC are all away from Arkansas. I yeah. get that. But but a couple of those are very winnable. I mean, A&M and Ole Miss are winnable games. And uh, as I've said, the key to this season, win the seven home games between Ole Miss, A&M, and, and Florida mm-hmm. – However many of those you win, if you win your seven home games, those three other games between Ole Miss, LSU, not LSU, I mean Ole Miss, Florida, and A&M will determine the record. I've got them losing to LSU. I've got them losing to Alabama. Uh, but those other – but I've got them winning the seven home games. The other three, those, those are the toss-up games. Those are the yep. money games. I mean, if you win your seven home games, you win one of those games. You're eight and four. You win two of them. You're nine and three. So, uh, you know, so I I don't think they'll win all three of those, but it's not out of the question. But, I mean, it's not out of the question. They lose some home games, too. So, I mean, it, mm-hmm. they've got to play well. We saw them lose to Liberty last year. So, I mean, just because they're playing at Razorback Stadium or War Memorial Stadium doesn't guarantee a win. But I think the teams they're playing are all winnable games, as was Liberty. So I, but you've got to bring it. You got to come and be ready to play. Mm-hmm. One thing I heard, uh, 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 well, they don't play Western Kentucky. They play Western. I think Kentucky. you probably. I think you may have meant Western Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, well, you can dominate a team on the scoreboard. You still have growing pains. Mm-hmm. I may not be making yeah, myself most clear, definitely. but I mean, you can still have. I, I, I just don't know that the offensive tackles will come out there the first game and dominate. I think Arkansas will win that game and win it pretty easily. But that doesn't mean that some of these guys, younger players, couldn't struggle at times. And they're, and they're going to dominate at times. But I can see them struggling some at times, too. But, uh, yep. uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, Arkansas is going to beat Western Carolina, and they're going to dominate them. But, but I don't know if they'll dominate every play at certain positions if that makes sense. If it doesn't, then I don't know. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and one of the takeaways that I've noticed with uh, the press conferences over the last couple days on the defensive side of the ball is that with that depth, you're able to be extremely aggressive. And that's something that's really fitting in well with the players and the style that they're also wanting to play. And when you have – guys that are buying into the system that are extremely happy, they're ready and they're willing to do any and everything that they can to put themselves on the line. That's where you really start to see the, the elevated play coming into in, in it. Uh, yeah. I mean, why into, it's, into the conversation. Well, I just think it's natural. Kids want to play aggressive on defense, Jason. I've never yeah. believed that kids want to play this slow read, react, pin, but don't break. I, I think kids want to go out there and try to kick somebody's butt that's lined up against them. I, I've always believed that. I, I think a defensive player has a mentality of going out there attacking and kicking somebody's yeah. rear. And that's how that's how Travis Williams believes in playing. I think that's how you play defense, man. I just don't – I mean, there there's more than one ways to skin a cat. There's more than one way to play defense. Mm-hmm. But I've always been this guy that believes kids want to go out here and do what you're saying, play aggressive, play attacking style. And uh, and try to 
just dominate. And so we'll see. I, but I do like to. I like the philosophy. I can't say I like the defense because I haven't seen it yet. But I do yeah. like the philo- philosophy. I've always been a guy who wants the team to play aggressive defense. I don't like the three-man front. I know mm-hmm. they will play at some, and there are certain situations where that's more warranted. But I, the base is going to be a four-man front, and I like that. I just think – I know Dick Adams said today he likes the four-man front. I think – honestly, yep. I think that's been one reason some of the defensive line coaches have probably – in part, why they've left is they didn't like the philosophy of the three-man front. It's just hard – for three people to play against six or seven people on the line. It's just hard. Yeah. That's what they're going against is six people counting the tight end. I just – I like the philosophy that Travis Williams is bringing. Now, I want to see the defense like everybody mm-hmm. else, but I think it's going to be a good one. And, yeah, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, I do think – like I said, I like the way it's kind of laid out for them to kind of start out Western Carolina, get some answers – get more answers against Kent State, and then get a test against uh, BYU, I guess. Yep. So uh, kind of answer a little bit of a elephant in the room that's happened over the last 24 hours, and that uh, A.J. Braithwaite has left the team. Uh, Montana uh, says, you know, great, uh, great t- content, guys. What happened from the DB, uh, with the DB from Western Kentucky? Well, uh, from few- what I've – been told that he's he's left the team. Is that correct, Otis? Yeah, he left the team, and Josh Street's been awarded that scholarship. You know, he was buried at hog position, which is basically the nickel. It is the nickel. Mm-hmm. They're calling it the hog. This year's yeah. called – it's been called rover. It's been called bandit. It's been called nickel. But strong safety, it's been called a lot of things. But uh, it's a uh, hog this year. Uh, but uh, – yeah, I, you know, he was buried on the depth chart. He came from a school where he was getting to play. But you got to understand, there's a lot of difference playing at Western Kentucky. And I know they kick Chad Morris' SEC team all over the field here. I get that. But but when you come from Western Kentucky to Arkansas and you're competing against the guys that Woodson and Step Darren up. Wilson and Williams has recruited, you're buried there. And I, I think he just – it was it, – it, it was – he wasn't going to play that much. Let's, I'll just put it that way. He wasn't going to mm-hmm. play much. He, he might have not even played special teams at the end. By the when they start cutting down the travel squad for SEC games, he might not have even been on the travel squad because you've got J. Lou at the Rover, or I'm not sorry, the Hog. You've got, I still think Snacks will end up there. Yeah. Walcott, somebody's going to end up there. I think Snacks will. He's played it some this week. I've always thought he would end up there. Uh, I forget who else they've got there, but they've got some other guys there that are playing there, and and I just don't think the kid was going to play that much. I think you saw the writing on the wall. It's hot. You're getting your butt chewed out. And <laughs> yeah. Just tried to check, toss it in. I, I do like giving Josh Street. I said this morning when we were discussing this before Pittman – I'm mean, sorry, before Deke Adams came in, uh, we a bunch of reporters were discussing this, and I said I would give the scholarship to Josh Street because there were some mistakenly thinking that you couldn't use that scholarship. They were thinking the old twenty-five limit, where in the SEC mm-hmm. you used a scholarship, you, it was gone once you used it. This is different now. That's yeah. all gone. You're at eighty-five now. If somebody quits, you can sign somebody to take that mm-hmm. spot. And I yep. said this morning I would give the scholarship to Josh Street, and that's exactly what Pittman did. And uh, I mean, the kids in the top well deserved too. Line. He's ahead of uh, several scholarship players there. A few scholarship players there, Jason. So why not yep. give him a scholarship? I mean, he's playing ahead of the guys who are on scholarship. Why not give him one? And they did. Yeah, he's, exactly. Yeah. He's six six, three hundred eleven pounds. This kid is, you know, he had Maryland, Kansas. He had some good offers. This is not some uh, guy that's 5'11", 280 pounds or something. I mean, we're talking six six, three eleven. So, I mean, he's a legit player. Probably should have got a scholarship out of Bentonville High School to begin with, but he didn't. Yep. He, he still chose to walk on. As I said, he had Maryland. He had uh, uh, Kansas. He had some legit offers. And he chose to t- walk on to Arkansas. That's this is his yep. dream. It means a lot to a kid like that. And I, I think that was a great move to give him a scholarship. And he will help them a lot more than Breath Breathway Breathway would have. And I'm not, 
I'm not knocking the kid, but he he just wasn't going to play that much. It's not a big deal. He yeah. left. Really not. I don't know. People were making a big deal about it. But I don't know why, because he was not going to play. He was, you know, he was a Western Kentucky, and at the most he would play a few special teams, and that was it. Yep. And uh, just to give you a heads up too, Otis, Hogville.net YouTube Live not only brings you sports coverage and our insight, but we connect people together. And what I mean by that is uh, John Everett and uh, Rusty Henry uh, over here on the message board actually made the connection that their old high school, uh, they went to high school together. And so they've, they've been kind of chatting it up here too. So that's kind of cool to see. Yeah. Um, so uh, Addison Book said that you know, it was week zero for college football is going to be approaching uh, pretty yeah. quickly. And, you know, once the pads come on, it's right around the corner. Yeah. Well, I'm ready for it. I'm, I've had enough 100 degree practices. I'm ready for oh. <laughs> I'm ready to go yeah. sit in the air conditioned press box and watch the game. <laughs> I've seen these 100 degree practices still. I, uh, you know, I mean, we don't get to stay very long, but uh, uh, no, I'm ready for football. I, I mean, practice is fine, but for one thing, and this is not a knock at any coach, but they get up there, and that's why places like Hogville, the newspapers, websites are important because when you get this stuff from the U of A coaches, it sounds like everything's great. You know, they put a yeah. positive spin on it. And, and I hear people say, well, there's no need for media now, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, that depends. If, if, if what you want is a vanilla report, but, I mean, these coaches are going to get up there and put a positive. And they, that's what they should do. That's what yeah. they should do. <laughs> but for the most part, you rely on, you know, as much. But And see, there again, but this is another thing. It's hard for me to go out there and watch 20 minutes of practice. I know people build their depth charts. They build this. They build that off 20 minutes. <laughs> but the truth That's is, tough. well, yeah, you don't. You're it's it's you don't see. You only see what they want you to see. So you don't know what's going on out there. But you do when the game starts, and that's when I can get on this show and say, yeah, hey, this guy's doing. Right now, I'm telling you what the coaches are saying and what a little bit I've seen in 15, 20 minutes a day. But uh, we're going by what the coaches say. I won't go by what Otis Kirk sees, you know, what I see out there on the field. Not that I know more than they do, but, I mean, I can form my own opinion. Then I can give you a factual opinion without guessing on it, you know, or relying on, certain, you know, their information to make to form my opinion. I can watch is the defense. I, that, I'm anxious to see how well the offensive yes. tackles do play. Do they dominate against Western Carolina? Yes, they should, but do they? Does the defense, does it have growing pains, you know, being so new? Um, mm -hmm. And the uh, three coaches new over there, you know. So, yeah, and do these uh, receivers from these small colleges dominate at this level? I want to see all that. And see, and that's why when the season starts, we'll see that. And we'll get answers to it, Jason. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like what Addison said, because I like the season getting here. Because I'm ready for it. Because I, 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 practice to me is fine, but I like I like to watch games, man. I can form my yep. own opinion. I don't like depending on somebody else's opinion. I, I like why I, I like to go watch prospects. I can tell you what Otis Kirk saw. I don't have to tell you what Rivals or 24/7 or CBS or mm -hmm. uh, ESPN or somebody said or on three. I can tell you what I think. It doesn't make it right, but I can give you my opinion, you know, and uh, yep. that's exactly. what I like about it. You know, I like to go out and watch and then give you my opinion on this stuff, not what somebody – I'm relying on stuff from the coaches because I, you never know, you know, they put a real positive spin on a lot of things, and they, that they should, but I, I'm ready to see it for myself. So speaking of, uh, you know, watching football games, uh, you got Vanderbilt traveling to Hawaii – uh, here coming up, it seems like it's going to be around the corner. Yeah. Uh, you know, Clark Lee made some strides with that Vanderbilt program from year one to two, and uh, we're going to see kind of what he's able to do. Uh, the last time you had a, a Vanderbilt head coach really make strides was James Franklin. Yeah, he and did so a great he did, job of our James. He did a hell of a job. Yeah. And he got a, you know, a job at Penn State and 
Clark Lee, I mean, he wants, I mean, he said last year he wanted to go 12 and 0, and that, that was his goal. And I, I get that, but you know, that's that's just I have to see how that goes. But you know, yeah. whenever Vanderbilt to gets it, to go cover that. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't want to go to, you don't want to go to, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. I know it's a rough job, but somebody got to volunteer. I'll do it. I'll volunteer. <laughs> It's a rough you job. I got to do it, man. So I'll well, take. Did I'll you, take the hit. Did you see where uh, Vanderbilt is? I got to double check on the source on this, but I don't think that their football stadium is going to be done before opening game. Uh, they were doing renovations to the field, and I think it's still Who tore was up. Vanderbilt. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I haven't kept up with that part of it very much. I know that. Uh, I've just been trying to keep up with construction for U of A to get there. I had to oh, take a detour the other day. I I did I forgot there was some construction there on the mm-hmm. east side of the stadium. And yeah, and so I had to take a few detours. Uh but yeah, it's uh yeah, Vanderbilt's I've been to that. The only stadium in the SEC that I haven't been to now is the uh, one OU. And I know they're not in yet, but I've been to Texas. I have yeah. never been to I, well, I've, I've been to Oklahoma City and been to Norman, mm-hmm. but I've never been to a football game at OU. So that will be – I've been to all the other SEC schools. So that will be the one school left that I've got to uh, go to. Uh, well, looks like John Everett, uh, he, he thinks that you might need to get a spot there on that staff. thinks that uh, <laughs> you're a better evaluator of a prospect than the coaches are. Oh, I don't know about that. I didn't mean it that way, and I don't want to sound like I'm bragging on myself. What I meant was I just like to go watch somebody and tell you what I see. I I don't – I mean, if I sit here and tell you some kid's a four-star, and then I go see – because he's rated that way by one of the recruiting services, then I go watch him play, and I'm thinking, what did they see? I just like – I don't mean I'm better than anybody. I didn't mean that at all. I'd never say crap like that. I just think that uh, I like to be able to give my opinion and – and yeah, it just that's what I meant by that. I don't, I don't, I don't think yep. I'm better than anybody, but I just, I do think that uh, I, I, I just like giving the value. I, I think I do have a pretty key. I mean, I recognized Courtney Crutchfield when he was in the ninth grade. Yeah, I got on TV and bragged about him. I was at the monster camp. And Courtney Crutchfield turned him up. He came to camp up here and nobody offered him. And it was, it, and then all of a sudden, right before his senior year, he blew up. But. I mean, yeah. I saw Crushfield. I, I saw Darren McFadden in the eighth grade. I said he's the best player I've ever seen in Arkansas. I mean, wow. and I saw Darren and his mother over there. I think it was his mother. Maybe it was, no, it was his stepmother. I saw Darren and his stepmother, I believe. I believe it was his stepmother. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was with a woman. I think it was his stepmother. But anyway, they were standing in the corner over here. And I went over to Darren. He said, why don't you want to talk to me? I'm just going to ninth grade. I said, I know who you are, man. I said, you just knocked down a 4 three forty out there. You outran every damn older player out there. I know who you are. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, it, I ain't going to take credit for evaluation of Terry McFadden. I think a blind man could have watched him play and known that, but yeah, man, he was good. God, he was a good ball player. People don't, I don't care he didn't tear it up necessarily in the NFL. That was one of the that's the best high school player I've ever seen. Yeah. And I did see Basil Shabazz. I saw Jerry Eckwood. Uh I'm aging myself there of course, but uh Shabazz, yeah. they were all great, man. They were wow. great players. That's it's kind of like do you I, I'm not gonna say the brand names because I don't know who all advertises, but uh but it's kind of like having three choices of drinks and they're all good. Yeah. You know but you want you might like one of them better I might like another one and yeah. one guys on the show here or watching the show might like the other one so it doesn't make but i i, I still think fadden's the best player i've ever seen in arkansas i doubt but still in equid it may be one a one b one c i mean they're all great but i love man i don't know maybe because he's the last one of the three but i love Derek mcfadden he was just That's i saw so him and he knocked down a four three in that going into the ninth grade man and i just i mean it wasn't a four three it was like a four three seven or something i don't remember but Four, three, two, maybe it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He said, "He said, why do you want to talk to me? I'm just, I'm just a young guy. I said, I know who you are, Jaron, and we got to be good friends after that. But uh, he'd even come over and give me a hug. I think I saw him play. I became his sports information director when he's senior mm-hmm. year. I think I saw him play five or six times as a senior. I quit watching anybody else. Just went and watched Darren. And he'd always 
go to the tell, ask, ask his coach, can he come over and give me a hug? And he'd come over and give me a hug before the game. And so I love Darren McFadden. God, I love that kid. Still do. And his parents, uh, their dad and stepmother, I love them. <laughs> uh, they were great, great people. And I think that was his stepmother that night. Um, but, yeah, I love going out and watching kids. I, I just think that uh, – I, but I, Courtney Crushfield, somehow I thought Jeremy Shockey. A lot of people don't know that story. I and I, <laughs> he was at NEO. And nobody ever heard yeah. of Jeremy Shockey. He's at NEO, and I came back. He was about six, probably six five, two fifteen, maybe at the time. I came back and told Arkansas, and Arkansas's coaches thought he was too small to play tight end here, and <laughs> nobody else recruited him. Then Miami yeah. lost some recruits. The University of Miami lost some prospects they thought they were getting after signing day. They went over to NEO and signed him. And wow. we know the history of that history one. There. Jeremy, I mean, Jeremy Shockey was a freaking stud. I went to see somebody else. It might, I don't remember who I, I – might have been the little Sproles kid that went to Kansas State, the short running back. Yeah, Darren, Darren Sproles, yeah. It might have been him. I'm not sure. But I was there to see – I wasn't there to see Shockey. I was there to see somebody else. And I don't remember who NEO was playing. But I kept seeing this tall white kid catching everything that was thrown in his direction. And I'm thinking, who in the heck is And I went over. He was, at the end of the game, they were way ahead. And he was sitting on the uh, training table. He wasn't getting worked on. I, he was just sitting there. He's, you know, junior college, they didn't have every place to sit. And he's sitting up there. And I went over and talked to him. And he said, yeah, I'd love I'd love to go to Arkansas. He said, you know, it's his, you know, SEC. And, uh, you know, and, and God, he was good, man. And then. Another kid that I that Arkansas could have gotten, I understood why they didn't, but Jay Cutler wanted to come to Arkansas. A lot of people don't know that. But Jay mm-hmm. Cutler wanted to come to Arkansas. I actually lucked into knowing about him. But, yeah, there's been some times through the years where I've seen kids early and got on them. I, I mean, the court and crush. I, I, I saw Marcus Wimberly, and I knew then that he was going to get a scholarship, and sure enough, he got one that day. I, Marcus Wimberly is a – going to be a great player for the University of Arkansas at Boxside High School. But I love watching yeah. kids, Jason. I feel like I've got I feel like I've got a knack for being able to identify kids. I don't just go by who the coaches say this guy or that guy or are they offering. Yeah. You know, seeing guys like like I said, Courtney Crutchfield I saw in the ninth grade. And I saw the end. I didn't know I don't know to this day. I don't think he ran real well in some 40s places is why he didn't get offered. But sometimes you've got to ignore that 40 yard dash. And, and just look at the player. I watched him. He was in. He was going into ninth grade, I believe. Whatever. Maybe he was going into tenth. He was in. It was at the end of the ninth grade year, I believe. He's playing seven mm-hmm. on seven, and they're playing at Benton, Benton High School in the some tournament. It wasn't. A, I, I said the monster camp. It wasn't. It was a tournament, seven on seven tournament. And he, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, he caught touchdown passes, and the other team was driving down to win. I believe a team from Texas. And yep. uh, he uh, intercepted the pass to save the win at defensive back. I'm telling you, Crutchfield is going to be great. C.J. Brown's going to be great. And I heard I had a guy the other day tell me he didn't feel like they were doing well in Texas. For one thing, they're not going to sign 10, 15 players from Texas. Those days are long gone. They've got great yeah. ties at other states. But I'm telling you, man, Ashton Bethel Roman and uh, yeah, and uh, 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 and the cornerback. I'm telling you, man, those guys are as good. Six four cornerback Selman Bridges, kids like that don't grow on trees, Jason. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling no. you, Ashton Bethel Roman, I, I wrote about his dad when he was a running when he was a safety coming out of high school. I'm telling you, man, uh, those they got two great ones there. And that's and I like the kid from uh Texas Canada too from Pleasant Grove. But uh, I'm telling you, those two kids, the mm-hmm. other two are as good as anybody in the country at their position, basically. But yeah, it's it's I love doing that, man. That's what uh uh, I love going out and watching these kids play. And, uh, 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 well, I'm, you know, to answer his question, right here, we've got a talk. I like, I love the tight ends first. I, I Morgan mm-hmm. Turner's the best tight end coach in the country. Yep. I mean, Dow Loggins was the best recruiting tight end coach, but this guy can really coach. I mean, he turned them out at Stanford. Barkey's Gums, the kid from Louisville, the, uh, mm-hmm. uh of course, we know about Luke and, Sh- and Shamar. I've always liked Ty Washington. There's five right there that can flat out play. They're going to be fine at tight end. And believe me, they're going to be fine there. Uh, oh, and I knew there was six. Nathan Bax. Yeah, the kid at Blocker. Yep, Nathan Bax. If they sign a tight end in this class, and I know they tried to get one. 
uh, from California. But instead of him, I w- and they didn't get him. He went to work. But I would try to get an inline block in tight ends. I feel guys like Lucas, Shamar Easter, Barkeys Gums, and those kids. Ty I Washington. Would, see, they're more. I mean, they're going to give you that res- catching threat out there in the ball and stuff. So I would go for more of an inline blocking tight end if it were me, but I'm not, it's not me. We'll see what they do, but that's what I would do if I could. Find. Now, those guys are hard to find because they've made these tight ends where they're about like, like Easter and Luke. They're, they're receivers, you know, and, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, that's what I like about the have some people on their butts too. That's why I liked about him up there in Eudora, Kansas. John and I went to see him, uh, yep, yep. but he'll do well at Kansas. Uh, but uh, Morgan kept two of those three. He kept the best two. I will say that you don't want to lose Easter and you don't best player in Arkansas mm-hmm. last year, and you don't want to lose Luke. I thought Luke, Luke to me was about as good as any tight end around. I mean, you know, uh, he he's just big time player. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, but, but uh, the question was, oh, Jacoby. I'm sorry, I got yeah. off tracker. I don't we know. There's, there is a drop off from KJ to any quarterback, but Jacoby Criswell can win games for you. I didn't feel like Malik Hornsby could win games for you. There was a drop off, but, but Jacoby Criswell is a very good quarterback. He gave Drake May a battle out there at North Carolina, Jason. Yeah, yeah. He gave Drake May a battle. Out there dead, Drake. Sorry. Drake May may be the first player taken in the draft. He and Caleb Williams are up there battling to see who's the first player taken in the draft. So you've got – I mean, I love Chris Well. I think I think you can run your entire offense. And I think I said earlier, if I didn't, I'll say it now, I think he throws the deep ball better than KJ does. Yeah, and there was a, a comment on the side thinking that if there was like a Hail Mary situation that they might bring Chris Well in, in for KJ. So that, that that's something that we'll have to, you know, to be continued to see. Uh, yeah. But uh, he did a lot of that Thursday. He was throwing that deep ball. He hit Isaiah. Isaiah Satana abused R.J. Johnson, young freshman. I got that was unfair. You had Chris Welly, quarterback, Isaiah receiver, and poor <laughs> freshman R.J. trying to cover that. And I mean, Chris Well threw that ball probably 60 yards in the air, right on the numbers, right in t- line, right in stride, I mean. And Isaiah caught it. It was, it was, that was, that was they should have been fined for that. Man, they abused it. <laughs> Those two should have been taken out and fined because that was abuse, man. But they're, yeah, they can, they've got some, some people can do, but yeah, Chris, well, if they'd have had him last year, yeah. they would have beaten LSU. Had the game, mm-hmm. had the, let me clarify that. If the game had played out like it did, 13 to 10, I believe it was. Yep. I believe that was the score. It was 13-10. Okay. If the game had played out like it did, which we don't know what it would have, but if it had, and they'd had Jacoby at quarterback, they would have beaten LSU, Jason. I'll put yep. it that way. I feel yep. great about that kid. And I, I feel totally KJ agree. is the best quarterback in the SEC. I think he's one of the top five or six in the country. I I, I got Caleb Williams and Drake May as the top two. I don't – I mean – I don't even know. I mean, there's some other ones, but those are my top two. But KJ's in that next pod, or next group. I've got those two at the top. And then the mm-hmm. next next foundation, uh, next layer, I've got KJ in that group, you know, somewhere in there. Gotcha. Well, Otis, I appreciate you jumping on uh, here in just a, probably about 10 minutes or so. I'm going to have Dudley Dawson on, the uh, newest minted Newport Greyhound Hall of Fame member. Yeah, you got that Hall of Famer coming on, man. That's I got the Hall of Famer coming, coming on. I'm glad I was on before him. I can't follow up this Hall of Fame stuff, man. Uh, I know. I, I I feel blessed myself, too, because, I mean, getting a Hall of Famer on in Dudley, I'm telling you, it's that, that's a great day right there, man. <laughs> the only Hall of Fame i ever been in is the, the Losers, uh, Losers Anonymous. <laughs> That's the only Hall of Fame I've ever made, man. I mean, I'll never make another one. So I'm proud of that one. I may get a shirt. Losers Anonymous, Hall of Fame. Oh, good. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not going to make a shirt because you're not a loser. So we're not going to go there. But um, if y'all want to jump back on here, probably in about 10 minutes or so, we'll, uh, we're will we going to have Dudley on. We're going to talk more about the players that have been on the podium the last couple of days, kind of from uh, his perspective and what their takes were. And uh, be sure to jump back on with us again here really shortly so 
uh, Otis, thank you for jumping on again. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you here pretty soon. I'll see you next week. You bet. Have a good one, Jason. All right, you guys take care, and I'll see you here on the turnaround here in just a few minutes.